Hey, my name is Reed. If you want to call in and tell us your story, please call us at 512-471-5106. That is 512-471-5106. Hold on, I, I think I'm getting a caller. Reno, first of all, thank you for being such a real caring friend. I always appreciate your phone calls because you always seem to put a smile on my face. I love your weird talks and all the advice you give me. You make me see things in a new perspective, and I have always admired that about you. I hope you like the painting I made for you. It's my first time working with watercolor, so it was quite challenging, but it was fun. Talk to you soon. I miss you so much. Love, Raina. I'm your host, Reno. These are my regions. And on this episode of Renoir's Memoirs, I get to talk to my great friend, Megan Bennett, also known as Infinite Marie, who's going to be a supermodel one day. She's incredibly caring, vibrant, and unique. We met in French class and bonded over fashion and music. I've been a fan of her since day one and know she will continue to be great. I interviewed her because I wanted to do a show about modeling, asked her about her life, her career, and what's next on the horizon, and three of her favorite songs. Enjoy. This call is now being recorded. Hi, Megan. How are you? Hey, how are you? I'm doing quite well. Uh, thank you so much for letting me interview for my show. I had a couple yeah. questions about modeling and just mm-hmm. what it's like to be a creative in today's world. Yeah, okay. How long have you been modeling? I've been modeling a little over two years now. So maybe a, okay. a year. I, be, I started second semester of my freshman year of college, so that was February. So it's been about like almost two years, actually. Was that with the red silk robe and the croissants? Yeah, that was literally my very first like like photo shoot of, I've ever. Well, that was like one of the very first few photo shoots that I like ever did, and it was in Spark Magazine, so that was a lot of fun. Okay, so you got your start by joining Spark Magazine. Yes. And what made you, I guess, join Spark Magazine? Well, I'm also majoring in like fashion, and so it was just something that I wanted to do, just to be a part of the magazine. And I remember telling myself, like, oh, you know, I think I would want to give modeling a shot. Like, why not? And so it kind of just went hand in hand with what I was doing. And around that same time, I was, I had just got back from like New York Fashion Week. I was just, just there as, just there as like a fashion student. And I did Austin Fashion Week, and even people there were, like, mistaking me as, like, a model. And I was able <laughs> to work with very cool, like, Australian photographers. So, like, that was super cool. Well, is there a noticeable difference between New York Fashion Week and Austin Fashion Week? So, I mean, New York Fashion Week, like, New York is the hub of, like, fashion. So, like, New York Fashion Week was crazy. And I met some very interesting people. Like, I remember one of the girls one of the models who I was helping backstage, like, I ended up finding her on Instagram maybe, like, months later, and she, she's, like, been in, like, the Fenty shows, like, the Savage wow. X Fenty shows, and just, like, killing it. And it's just, like, amazing, just, like, the people who, like, you just meet. Good for her. Um, who are your inspirations and role models? I feel like, of course, I really like Naomi Campbell. Like, she's just... Of course, icon. she's so fierce. I know. I love. I love her. Like she's amazing. Especially just like like her walk is just so iconic, and she's just so beautiful. I love her. I feel like we're talking about just like models like now. I also really love like Jordan Dunn. Kind of growing up, especially like in high school, I thought she was just absolutely stunning. I also really do like Bella Hadid. I think that I've watched her modeling journey for a few years and I think that she's like really grown and just like elevated and I honestly just love her so much. Is there a particular model that you try to, I guess, model your walk or your look after? If I, it would definitely be Naomi. I want my walk to be iconic just like hers. Gotcha. What is your best side? Ooh, I think my left side. Your left side, why would that be? I don't know. I think I've just always favored my left side. Um, okay. I think I remember in like high school, I used to like always take pictures on like with the left side of my face. So I don't know. What have been some of your favorite places for photo shoots? 
Would it be like the showers, poolside, <laughs> Sicilia, Italy, the Matrix, or in your room? I feel like my most favorite, favorite location, actually just the, the most recent ones that I've done probably like a month or two ago. I went to Enchanted Rock and it was just so beautiful up there and we were like way up on top of the rocks and I was in like these beautiful clothes like picked out by this stylist and it was amazing. So like it's like these sand dune hills, like it was so cool and then just all the people there, there was like a lot of really interesting people. Like there was like okay. weddings going on and like, and, like it's definitely a common place for photo shoots, that one, so you saw a lot of very interesting I, I have to say that I think for me, my favorite place to watch you do your photo shoots is your room, where you just, you are the director and you are the model. You get to... I, I actually really enjoy those, like, especially just because of quarantine. Sometimes they just get a little bored, you know. Like, I genuinely like, like modeling. It's, like, so fun to get to, like, play directly with the models and get to, like, go and see different characters. And it's just, like, it's like you know, it's pretty easy, but there's a lot more work that actually goes into it. Like, I literally be trying to set up my phone and be like, I have an idea. So I'm going to try and do it. Would you say that, I guess to continue that, do you have a different personality when it comes to modeling? Do you know, is it not Megan? Is it now Marie? Yes. So I started going by Marie in the modeling world because I do feel like, you know, anytime, especially with a lot of creatives, it's just common to be in a different element and kind of like in a different alternate show. Like for me, my name is Reno, but all my friends call me Renoir because that's the artist side of me, the one who right. will be creative. <laughs> Can you walk me through how a typical photo shoot goes? Like, I guess more of the setup. It honestly just depends on the type of photo shoot. So like, if it's a photo shoot that's for like a brand and it's like a clothing brand, then obviously like I show up and it's, when it's like clothing, like a clothing brand shoe and it's just for like products then it's not very like cozy cozy it's very we gotta get the front back side versus like if it's just like a very like creative or kind of just like editorial shoe there's like a stylist who has all these clothes picked out and then you know you'll show up you get your makeup done and there's a lot of like prepping i would say that goes into it for me, like on my end, I just have to like make sure that I have the hairstyle that they want or that I have anything, like sometimes they require me to wear like nude undergarments, like different things like that. Who comes up with the concepts or the tone and like the angles? Is it is it you or is it mostly the photographer? Like, you know, how does the collaboration, I guess, work? I feel like it's definitely a blend. I personally love, like, as much as I like working with brands, obviously, because, you know, like, when you work with brands, you do campaigns, you do get paid. But one right. part, I feel like no matter, like, how like how successful my modeling career will be, I feel like I'll always just love doing collaborations because it's just that freedom of creative direction. And it's like, sure. when you're just getting paid to do a shoot, like, you kind of just... Like, they tell you exactly what needs to happen, but when it's, like, a creative or, like, when a really good photographer or someone I look up to, like, reaches out to me and is like, hey, I want to collaborate with you, they'll, like, send me some <laughs> that must be so exciting. Like, you know, like, I'll send them reference, reference and images, and we'll just kind of, like, go back and forth and, like, so fun to, like, watch it come to life. Of course. In my photography class, we're looking at different concepts of photography such as the rule of thirds, I was wondering, what are the rules to modeling? Oh, goodness. I would say one is definitely confidence. That's the one thing that I tell people. A lot of my friends will ask me, like, how do I take good pictures? And I always tell them, like, first of all, you need to be confident. If you look even the slightest bit uncomfortable on camera, it's going to show. It is going to show. So even if you just have to fake it till you make it, you need to have, like, <laughs> You need to just walk in there, like channel your alter. That's why I feel like the alter ego, kind of like channel your alter ego, and right, right. get in front of the camera and go. But I definitely say that would be one. I would say another one, number two, would be like movement. It's just so good to just like move, and it doesn't have to be like big or grand movements, but small, intricate, or even just like a slight shoulder pop or 
a shoulder down or lifting the chin up or slightly turning it to the left. It's like those little moves to get the perfect shot. Wow. In following up to In Confidence, I was wondering, like, what do you think about or what are you saying to the camera to achieve those fierce looks? Oh, gosh. I like... For me, I don't know, I like listening to music, like, when I do, like, photo shoots, so, like... Is Lose Control always playing in the background? <laughs> um, I don't think I've done a shoot where Lose Control is playing in the background, but I'm not opposed to that song. I read that you, uh, that you have that play in the background of some of your shoots. Lose Control? Maybe I might have been. I mean, it's definitely on one of my playlists, so... Probably. I just, like, really, like, love to, like like dance and just like when you have like like music is just so comforting and when you have like music that makes you happy and feel comfortable you're going to be more comfortable in front of a camera and so like I have all these different playlists like I have like a fierce playlist a happy playlist to just like help me get in the right mindset and like mood you can help me or help explain the difference between photos and different mediums but such as for magazines Spark versus Instagram versus Twitter, because I noticed that a lot of the photos that you have on Twitter don't appear on Instagram because they don't necessarily fit your feed. I was wondering what does that mean? I feel like my main, my main kind of like for modeling is definitely like my Instagram. It's kind of just like, like my creative outlet where I post like my shoots or like pictures I take or like self timers or just things like that. I feel like my Twitter is just for more of like just very casual like selfies or just like other photos and just le less about modeling kind of just more just about just like whatever where do you see yourself in two years oh that's a big one i've been working really hard honestly and right now there's a lot of things happening in the work that i can't talk about right now but i'm hoping it is definitely my goal to be signed to a major agency, to multiple major agencies very soon, but by two years I want to be able to have like my modeling career be like a full-time like career. Of course, because um, I remember you talking about that many times, that uh, in two years you'll be the next supermodel. Yes, now I, I did say that. Um, that definitely, I know it's such a long shot. I'm going to work really hard to do my best. I'm always trying to like improve and get better. Where do you go to recharge? God, my bed. Your bed? <laughs> Is that what you dream? Uh, in yeah. your voyage interview, you talked about being in a household that allowed freedom of expression. Mm -hmm. I was wondering if you could elaborate on that more. And I was also curious, where do you get your style from? Ooh, I feel like the household that I grew up in, it was just a very, like, it's a very judgment-free kind of household. And I feel like, you know, not everybody has that sort of like dynamic or relationship or like atmosphere in their own home like that. But I was just, I'm mm -hmm. so grateful that like, I just have a supportive family and like a supportive like parents who just allow me to be my authentic self. And so, yeah, I just, so I, I think I just carry that concept in to like when I like moved out to my own apartment, like I want to live with people who are just like, free to express themselves and just you want to come home to a very calm and non-stressful just very relaxed environment and so home just has to be a very safe place and then like as far as like style wise I am literally so like I feel like there's so many different like moods but I'm just so in love with like the early 2000s style and I also really love like elements from like the 70s but like the like the flare pants, I love like cultures like from the nineties, like crop tops. So just like mixing like I feel like the two thousands, the nineties and like the seventies, like a blend of like those. Like I really love those elements. Also in your voyage interview, you said you wanted to work with brands and other respected companies. Do you see yourself in the future starting your own business? Because you almost did go into business yourself, right? Taking textiles over marketing. Yes. So I, I, I do see myself later down the line, like starting my own brand, but I feel like I've kind of held off because I want to wait until I know it's for sure something that I'm 
extremely passionate about. And like right now, I'm super passionate about like my modeling career and like growing it and having that continue to be. And so I feel like after a few years, once things are more like set in place and I'm, you know, like I'm discovering and still learning more things, I think I'll be able to like really zoom in and kind of like identify what I would want to start or what I would want my brand or my company to be about, you know? Lastly, is there anything else you'd like to add about what it's like to be a model in today's age? I would say like modeling now, it definitely has, like it doesn't matter your height, it doesn't matter about your size, and honestly, it doesn't even matter about how pretty you are. It's about, first of all, it's like number one, confidence, and just like having that attitude. Like I feel like what draws people into me is that I'm just very confident in myself and I believe in myself. And when you believe in yourself, you have to be your number one. You're like your number one cheerleader or else no one else is going to believe you like if you're basically pitching yourself to others so if you don't believe in yourself how are other people going to believe in you so like it literally just doesn't matter what you look like what your size what your shape what your age any of those factors like if you are passionate about modeling then you can make it happen it doesn't matter what anybody's telling you like i've had plenty of people tell me no Plenty of agencies reject me, plenty of things, and you just you just got to keep going. Hey guys, it's Marie. You might know me as Infinity Marie on Instagram, or some of my close friends might know me as Megan, pre-modeling era. Thank you so, so much, Reno. I am so appreciative of this opportunity, and I'm just so grateful to share some of my three favorite songs at the moment that I feel like are just really defining me and the era that I'm in right now and they're also just three songs that I really love so I am really loving Telegraph Avenue aka Oakland by Childish Gambino I'm also really loving Feels Like Summer by Childish Gambino because it's always summer in my head always frolicking always dreaming and finally my most favorite song right now which is comb my hair by pretty boy Aaron. i love these songs and i really hope you guys love the interview and you love these songs just as much as i do power 106 LA, it's your girl yes ortiz got some brand new music i need you to turn it up and let me know what you think it's lloyd called oakland on power 106 I was making Japanese and she's watching DVDs oh, in Oakland. Now I'm driving up the five and she waits till I arrive in Oakland. In Oakland. Everything that I wanted, only gotta drive for the moment. If you tell me turn around in the morning, for the moment. But you know me, you know how I get when I'm lonely. And I think about you in the moment. But everything you do is so Oakland, so Oakland. Foot on the gas, I'm just trying to pass All the red lights and the stop signs I'm ready to go Before I get to the baby, that's a problem Cause I'm way too scared to call and you might give me a stay night home I don't really want to drive, but I think I'd probably die In Oakland, in Oakland When my hands are too intense, so I can't sit on the Can we just roll with the feeling? Can we just roll for a minute? Wait a minute, foot on the gas. I'm just trying to pass all the red lights and the stop signs. I'm ready to go, but I'm really not ready, girl. That's a problem. Cause I'm way too scared to fall, and I know you choose to stay now. All the girlfriends saying, here we go again Rich kid, but he act like a gentleman Last one didn't end like it should've been Two dates and he still wanna get it in And they saying it's because of the internet Try once and it's on to the next chick X or the old face on your exes Right?
And we can do the same thing if you wanna have at it when your thoughts can't breathe and you're thinking that's mad at it. You wanna be a mom and I wasn't mad at it. I was thinking about me. I'll be really bad at it cause I'm thinking about me. Weeks in Dubai, Fourth of July, House of Kawhi. Yeah, we can try. So let's try. Same thing.
up to the nice, what you like? Put the wear the black or the white. I can get dressed in a minute. Call when he come, pick you up when he finish. Gap tooth grinning. Why did he lie when he said we not winning? But uh, don't you look good for me? 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 But I've seen what I had and I'll dress when it's new But I'll stay like the name and it thing I can lose If it's all gonna be calm, then we're good, so we good now I gotta look good for you, baby, look good I gotta look good for you, baby, look good So let me comb my hair for you, baby So let me comb my hair for you to call in and tell us your story please call us at 512-471-5106 that is 512-471-5106 hold on i I think i'm getting a caller hey reno so i was supposed to send this a long time ago but i haven't gotten around to it until now sorry i've been so busy lately and haven't gotten a chance to talk to you in a while but i miss you lots thanks for being a genuine friend to me and for being someone i can always talk to and rely on hope you enjoy the pop rocks Jordan. On this episode of Renoir's Memoirs, I get to talk to a close friend of mine, James Bonner. He is a salesman in San Francisco and he just had a birthday not too long ago. I called him and talked about life and tried to give him an impromptu interview. James and I have always had such incredible talks. He's, he's really taught me a lot about life. He has a well thought out outlook on life. He was the track captain my freshman year of high school. We bonded over music. I know he's destined to have miracles in his life again, and one day soon, I'll get to see him, as I haven't seen him or any of my friends from Monterey seeing us this past Christmas. I miss them all dearly, and I'll be running through the dunes soon, maybe cruising on the 68th in June. Those days are far away, but hopefully I'll make it back one day. For now, we just have three tracks that James picked that he says are his favorites. Delilah by Florence and Machine, Tell Me When to Go by E40, and Jombie by Tool. Enjoy. James, 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 happy birthday. Hey, Reno. Thank you, sir. How are you? I'm doing well. Are you chilling by the pool drinking mimosas? I'm having an Irish coffee, at least. I don't think there's any pools that are open for no mimosas by the pool. An Irish coffee is coffee with whiskey, except I'm, I'm using the non-traditional bourbon, coffee, whiskey, and then Bailey. And people usually put whipped cream on top, but I don't, I don't really do that. Well, it's good you have you starting your birthday off on a, a warm start, I guess, right? It is, yeah. You don't really, well, at least I don't usually get drunk on these, but they do make you feel good in the morning. <laughs> I yeah. mean, it is Irish cough. <laughs> exactly. For my final show ever, wow. 24 hours of nonstop programming, part of it is that since it's my final show, I wanted to mm-hmm. showcase who I am and where I come from. And part of that is 
my friends and family who have influenced me in my life, and I thought that Jane Pawnick has to be in my show because well, you, you have been one of my most genuine, caring, and supportive friends since I've known you, since I was a, a little freshman at York and joined the track team. Well, thank you, Reno. You've always been there for me. Of course. Well, I, and appreciate I have some questions for Jane to help us go through the years a bit, if that's okay. Of course. There may be some background noise, uh, but... Uh, that's okay, Jane. I wanted to know, Jane, have you been living in your golden age? Oof. I think so. Yeah, I, I think so. I mean, I'm unlucky to live in San Francisco and have a good job and be able to work through COVID. So, yeah, I would say so. James, do you remember when we made that playlist? Yes, I do. <laughs> Are you still listening to Kesha? Not as much. Pretty rarely. I don't listen to Kesha that much anymore. That was very, like, 2012, 2013. That was, like, the very first thing we bonded over was music and yeah. our love for Kesha and, and like, exactly. uh, awful pop music. Exactly. Hey, awful pop music has a place in my heart. <laughs> it does. Some Toby Keith was also on that playlist. I was looking at <laughs> yep. And some other artists I couldn't remember. Fiesto, I think, was one of them. Probably, the name yeah. of James, I want to know, what is the secret to your happiness? Probably keeping busy and productive. Otherwise, I'd go crazy. What are you looking forward to in the coming year? I'm looking forward to COVID hopefully easing off so we can go back to some sort of form of normalcy. I don't think it's going to be quite the same as it was before, but that's my hope. When did you get cats, James? Shortly after I had a seizure. So I think it was a week after I had the seizure. Just because, you know. Is that kind of like a comfort animal? A little bit, yeah, yeah. Except kittens are not as comforting as you'd expect. They're actually really prickly. My cats are actually really <laughs> well-behaved, so. What are their names? Quinn is the girl and Bond. Quinn like and Bond? Bond? Yeah. Okay, okay. Wh why Quinn? Quinn was a character from a book series I really enjoy, and then Bond is because he kind of looks like he's wearing a tuxedo. Have you been wearing any bow ties recently? <laughs> it's funny. No, I have not been wearing any bow ties recently. I was actually just made fun of for my pink bow tie that I used to wear at Valentine's Day. And, you know, I still haven't quite recovered from the shame. But, well, I'm not ashamed. <laughs> but I was shamed. Because I'll never forget, James, I, I told you about a website I used to frequent, Jack's Threads. Yeah. And you bought a I, ton of bow ties from them. I did. Yeah, that's funny. I thought about that the other day, Jack Threads. I wonder if they were you, uh, it. Were you well known in Lenore Rhine for your your bow ties? No, actually, it was it's a southern thing, so I was actually exposed to bow ties there. Oh, I see. Is it also yeah. a southern thing to, to drink Mad Dog? That was just a college thing, and I would never recommend that to anybody. <laughs> Speaking of recommendations, James, do you yeah. have any movies that are like Police Academy that you'd recommend? Like Police Academy. Well, Airplane is kind of a classic. That's like the original kind of, I think probably before Police Academy. And the Naked Gun series actually as well. Naked Gun series is hilarious. Are those your favorite kind of films? Not necessarily, but they're on the list. I mean, I, I do really enjoy them. Because I remember, James, you just came back from North Carolina, I want to say. And mm -hmm. I hadn't run in a long time. And I was, in, I was stuck in Marina because my mom was working at something. And you and I mm -hmm. went on a run, <laughs> and it must have been like two miles, so a warm-up for you. I, re I, I remember, was, yeah. I was dead. <laughs> I remember I came back to your family home, and I was so tired. And your mom was like, well, do you need anything? And I was like, I'll just, I'll just walk to grocery outlet and get something. And I got like stuff to make quesadillas or something. And I, I just made quesadillas that. and watched Police Academy with your family. Yeah, it's a funny movie. It's got good dry humor, and, like, it's, like, ridiculous situations, but everybody plays it straight like it's normal. <laughs> agreed, agreed. I wanted to know, after all those years of uh, long-distance training and being a long-distance runner, if that's helped you in your life, the uh, patience, the planning, and just the grinding for, for a goal, if that's helped you. Yeah, I, well, I would definitely say so. It, it definitely helps to, to train in long-distance running for the, for the rest of your life because, you do have that ability to focus on long-term goals. And a lot of life is not necessarily pleasant. So it's a big misnomer that life is going to be pleasant the whole time. What is your long-term goal, James? 
you know, that's a tough one. Probably just keep going and try and make enough money to retire early or something like that. Buy a nice house, that, that kind of thing. Yeah. Do you have any sage advice for anyone? Never put all your eggs in one basket in life because if you lose that thing, you'll be lost. That's a good one, James. Do you, you. do you remember the first time we met, James? I am sad to say no, but I'm guessing the first track practice. The, la- the first time I really remember meeting you, James, was when we went in one of the York vans and we drove mm-hmm. to either Greenfield, Soledad, or King City. Or King City, and, yeah. And we were just in the back for the longest time. And I was like, you're that long distance runner. You're the captain, right? And you're like, yeah, I'm the captain. I think, uh, yeah. and then I, I played something up probably off my iPod touch years and years ago. Those are eons ago. How's the, how's the insurance team doing? We're doing well. Fortunately, COVID hasn't really impacted our business, so we're able to keep trucking along. And I mean, it impacted us a teeny bit, but we're, we seem to be doing okay. James, do you have any memories between us that you can remember that I, have, I guess I've forgotten? We did when we did our first track meet officiating. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and we, like, didn't know what we were doing. We uh, we did, like, long jump and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. I Wait, hold on. Where's my badge? I have my badge somewhere in my room. I forgot, James, that we were in that class with Coach V, and we learned how to yep. be track officials. Exactly. It was hilarious. I mean, God, that was a nightmare. I will never do that again. I, I will never do that again either. I will never forget. Yeah, that's right. I didn't know how to do the long jump, and it's like I... I competed in it. I know how. I thought I knew how they measured it, but I guess not. <laughs> and the coaches were so mad. But Mr. Peters was probably like, "Guys, keep, keep keep it together. Like, what are you doing?" Yeah, he would have said that. Yeah, I know. I wish he was there. That was when, were you uh, were you running for Hartnell at that time as well? Or no, was, no, no. That's when I was that's when I was washed up. Was, no, I don't say that. You were washed up. You were taking a break. <laughs> no, no, I was washed up. I couldn't really run anymore. Don't, I don't think of it like that, James. Just like, well, uh, this is the first you. week that I've been able to walk, and so... That's true, okay, I've already yeah. Been sick. I've already been I'm planning, kind of and I'm like, oh, I'm going to come back. I'm, people would ask me, like, oh, so what are your goals for, you know, after you get done with, with uh, recovery? And I think, I'm yeah. in the Olympics. There you go. You're, you're a good dreamer. That's one thing I've always been good at, James, is dreaming, and you've always been good at keeping me on the ground. Good. Well, you got to have both. <laughs> what are you up to today, James, for your birthday? We're going to hang out for now. Probably go. There's a cool fish bar in San Francisco, so go there eventually. And then my girlfriend is going to cook dinner. And I'm sure there will be plenty okay. of stuff in between. Drifting through the holes with the sunrise. Holding on to your clothes. Climbing up the walls, all that flashing light. I can't never let go Cause I'm gonna be free and I'm gonna be fine Holding on for your call Cause I'm gonna be free and I'm gonna be fine Maybe not tonight Now the sun is up and I'm going to Holding on for your call Another drink just to pass the time
Christ had dreads, so shake them. I ain't got none, but I'm planning on growing some. Imagine all the Hebrews going dumb, dancing on top of chariots and turning tight ones. Ooh, tell me when to go. Talking on my getro on my way to the south. My second or third trip. Some Henny, some Swishers, and some Listerine strips. Dr. Green Thumb lips just to ease my thoughts. Not just the cops, but the homies you gotta watch. The moon is full, look at the dark cloud. Sitting in my scraper watching Oakland going wild, ta da! I don't bump mainstream, I knock underground. All that other sh sugar coated and watered down. I'm from the bay where we hyphy and go dumb. From the soil where them rappers be getting they lingo from. Ooh. Tell me when to go. 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 Show and I love this song. Just listen to it. This is Autumn Leaves and Roy. 